Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday evening, a very exciting day. Um, I hope you had an exciting day and a very um, productive day as well. Today's topic we're going to be talking about is from grind to shine, how one man's journey led him from dirt poor to filthy rich. This man has done it himself with his two knuckles, but also his street smarts, as well as his business acumen. I'm so excited to have this gentleman on the show, Mr. Curtis Meeks. He's, we're going to be talking to him momentarily on the Sherrod Show. But I am this evening wearing my Sherrod Show shirt, um, and this is a special occasion because with the Sherrod Show, we are uh, today I am promoting my foundation, the Lupus Foundation, where you can be able to donate and um, help people who have lupus and other autoimmune diseases to be able to learn how to play the piano, to learn how to act, to learn how to do so many things in the industry that would, would be normally helped from them because of their illness. This is what the Sharp Minded Culture Center is all about. You donate to it tonight, um, look at your monitor and you'll be able to get a free Sherrod Show slash Essence Television t-shirt. Just follow the link there below and you'll be able to get a free t-shirt. Then also the Sherrod Show is brought to you by Essence Television. This is the television network for the Sherrard Show, where you can be able to see the greatest interviews of your life, from Tommy Davidson to David Allen Greer to the Manhattan Smokey Robinson, as well as this episode with Curtis Meeks on the Sherrard Show. Just follow your monitor, and voila, there you are. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, many people have aspirations to be able to come from nothing and go to something, but so many people talk a good talk, but they don't walk the walk. But this gentleman here has actually done it and now he's here to talk about it and he's the first time on a Sherrod show i'm so excited to have him mr curtis meeks how are things you? all right what is it looking like <laughs> you hear that swing ladies and gentlemen you hear that that's not from uh california ladies and gentlemen that is down south i know that for a fact welcome sir how are things for you oh everything is all right everything now, brother now, now, Curtis, um, we're going to jump right into it because we have so many people eager to hear your story. Now, tell us a little bit about where you came from and how things got started for you initially in your young life. I come from the east side of Austin, Texas, you know, in the projects, just all over East Austin. They know about me. And uh, just, you know, in the ghetto, at the ghetto, just going in and out. And, you know, I was a young dude about nine, maybe 10, catch city bus going to the boxing gym, you know, fighting. And then my coach grabbed me, took me under his arms and um, taught me from right, what's right and wrong, you know? And you know, and shit, I took that and ran with it. I did the boxing, the boxing got a lot of game and in, in, in the boxing, there's a lot of game and a lot of con. I know the ins and outs of both of them. That's why I'm teaching my young fighters like Floyd, how this game really go, you know? And and he's been listening. And right now he's going on what four, I think four and oh, maybe five and oh, four and oh, I think he's four, he's four and, oh, and oh, yeah. and you can't hit him. Yeah, he's four and oh, four knockouts. He listened to me. He, he, you know, that's a boxer that listen. Him and his dad listen to me, you know, and they're gonna be champion. I don't, and I'm not in it for no money. They know I ain't in it for no money. I got plenty of that, you know. So I'm not a dude that's coming to beg, coming to help the new generation come up, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't about no money with me. I make my own money. You know, they, if the people know me, they know about me. Now, Curtis, yeah. um, you know, when you speak about the game of boxing, um, it's a big game. Is that what turned you off about boxing when you were initially in it? You were in it to win it, but you saw a lot of politics with it? Yeah, I was in it to win it and wanted to fight whoever come to the table. We were, we want to fight anybody for me and James Kirkland. Me and him grew up together, but you know, it was all in his ear on some BS, but that's still my brother and we doing, he still do his thing, I do my thing, but they just, there's too much BS at the end of the day. But we grew up under Luke Duver, that uh, that uh, generation. With Luke Duver, it was Portnett Whitaker. We, you know, we was in training camp. We were number 17, 18 years old. And we was into that. But um, as you get older, you see, I learned a lot. And then I got a lot of game and a lot of knowledge from one of the homies down in H Town. He came and got us from like 17, 18 years old, Jay Prince. And he going to give you the game. He's not going to sit there and give you the game like that, but he going to talk to you. And I ask questions. So I learned a lot from Jay. Jay gave me a lot of 
a lot of game and a lot of, a lot of knowledge. And I took that and I ran with it and man, and shit, if it wasn't for day, man, I wouldn't have a lot of things that I have today. Now, Curtis, um, so in, in my day growing up, Muhammad Ali was the talk of the town. He was the talk of the world. You notice Muhammad Ali fought everybody. He fought Ken Norton, he fought George Foreman, he fought uh, George, he, he fought uh, George Foreman, he fought Joe Frazier, Leon Spinks, the list goes on. When the public wanted to see it, they made it happen. But you're saying basically in your generation, if you wanted to fight somebody, it's more about the money and politics opposed to the about the fans. But no, it's it's like, let me see how can I explain it. Like it, you got to be a bad dude to be up there, like a bad dude. So everybody, Kirkland was a little bit better than everybody, like far as that Austin and Texas. Like, or Tex Kirkland was the man, so everybody was focusing on James Kirkland, and I was focusing on him too. So we trying to get him up to the up here, which he got up there. He fought Canelo, he took a loss, but he fought Canelo, but he was up there. But that's you got to get up here. Then you come bring your brothers and let them fight on undercard like me. I fought on undercard, ready to fight anybody. I won on that fight. I mean, I won on uh, when I fought. But when we were younger, everybody I was just on Kirkland. You see what I'm saying? They wasn't eyes on me, but which was cool. Cause I'm happy they eyes wasn't on me. Cause, cause I took my whole game and went to a whole nother, like I went somewhere that happened on his own. I made more money than a lot of these boxers that's fighting today. Like a lot of the top fighters. Like I made now, more now what money. Was your, what was your style in terms of, how were you able to do it to make, you made to make so much money? Was it outside the ring? Were you taking on um, the promotional side and the boxing side? What was your, your strategy? Well, see, my, my strategy with making money was like, I I gamble real big, you know? So I was betting on boxing fights, like when Kirkland fight, bet on him, Mayweather fight, I bet. And I took a lot of my money and put it in uh, real estate, bought a lot of property, bought a lot of houses. Then I get foreclosed homes. I buy them, then I flip them. You know, I probably buy one for probably about 60 to 70,000 and sell them for 370,000. Mm -hmm. Do five or 10 of them houses, Good, you know, and then I keep going, keep keep going, you know. But I bet professional, like that's what I do. I gamble real big. Now, now, Curtis, um, you fought out of what weight division in class? For one thirty-five. Mm -hmm. And what was your what was your record? Um, your professional record? I know you said you still um box, you know, if you get the right deal or so. But what is your what is your current standing record? Well, really, I signed my own deal, but my record was. Like, I think I got 14 fights, one loss, something like that, 14 and one. Mm -hmm. But I don't so, need nobody to me. I sign my own deal. I don't need nobody. I don't want to sign with nobody nowhere. But I'll fight anybody right there if I got to. They just give me about four or five months so I can get in shape and be ready for whoever. You, you know? know, you know, it's so um, it's so admirable and have so much respect for boxers. But you see now, Curtis, that um, they're kind of diminishing boxing by having YouTubers out there boxing with the professionals. Tell everybody who's watching right now how foolish that really is. For example, with, with Jake Logan um, getting in there with Floyd Mayweather, or Logan Jake getting in there with Floyd Mayweather. How ridiculous is that? Oh, champ, Mayweather just getting the money, man. Mayweather's the money man. If you want to get in that champ, he's going to beat the brakes off of him. He's going to beat him so bad. Like, I can go in there and beat both of the white boys. I mean, not excuse my language, but I can go in there and beat both of them right now. They don't have the skills. He'll pay the bills. Champ know he can go in there and just beat him, like beat him with no problem. It is some BS, but at the end of the day, Champ is a businessman. He want money. You know, now, that's now, what now, now, Curtis, um, people don't understand that if you get into a fight, an average Joe, or even somebody that hasn't even trained nearly as long as Floyd, he'll have a hard time hitting him, correct? You say it one more time. Logan is going to have a hard time hitting Floyd because Floyd has been doing this since he was a baby. And you talk about a guy taking on it for the last couple of years, a professional going against a Joe, a Joe even have a hard time landing one punch on him. Is that correct? Yeah, he ain't going to be able to hit for or too cold, man. I mean, if you do it's hit like chips and keep coming at him, he's going to just beat him up. You know, he's just going to pick him apart and he's going to get tired and then the floor going to finish him. That's just how it is. Like, people don't understand street fighting and boxing is totally different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, I, and, and as unfortunate as it is, Nate Robinson had to learn that the hard way, huh? 
Yeah, he thought he could man. You know, everybody got confidence in this. And I, I can whoop him, I can beat him. He ain't got no move. And then he go in there and get hit with something, get cracked. See, the first round, like first 30 seconds, the street fight is going to be tied. It's over with. First 30 seconds, and after that, it's a, it's a wrap. You know, you're going to come in there and it's over. Mm -hmm. now, now, Curtis, um, where do you see boxing going now from here? Um, with the generation you were speaking about with um, Parnell Whitaker, the man, you Sweet Pea, you couldn't even hit him. The man was a, de a defensive expert. He was an excellent fighter. But where do you see now your generation going and the next in boxing? Well, it's a new generation as far as the three, about three, four, about four, top five, about five fighters that's in the top right now that's cold. You know, from Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, from Tank, and you got the little young fighter that I got, Floyd, and, and you know, they're they going to be champions. Them right there, they the coldest that I ever seen. You see what I'm saying? But they mind got to, they got to have it on their mind, though. You got to be in shape. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't in shape, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. With me and Kirkland, we thought we can just go in there and beat everybody until we got in there with somebody that was tough. We wasn't in shape. But if we had somebody to guide us, like how they getting got, man, we probably would have been champion, too. I mean, if, we ain't, if they gave us a chance to fight for a title, we probably would win it. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, now who was your only defeat to, Curtis? No, it was a dude. I really beat him. They gave me a split decision, a split decision. Somebody Gonzalez, that way back in 03 or something. Now, um, you know, James Kirkland is the one that um, he's a very hard hitter. He was a man. Um, his best fights was when he was trained by the, the lady, as a matter of fact. He had a female trainer who was exceptional at training him. And um, he, he fought Canelo a few years back. And he looked good, but he got caught with a right that put him down. Um, but I haven't seen him since. No, Kirkland, if he would have stayed with his team, ain't nobody was beating us, like, you know, and nothing. Like, they, they know Canelo, that's one of the best fighters right now, Al. Canelo's the best fighter, I can't say. Don Billingsley, that's that's the team that he need. We grew up for nothing. We ain't had nothing. We, we was known to, to kill something, like, you know, that's we. But he wanted to go with a team they, with the money problem. Like, they had money issues and all that BS shit, so. Like, it was all a bunch of bullshit. That's why he just went in there and just took that money and did what he had to do. Like, mm -hmm. Canelo, knew, Canelo knew at all his fights, that's the most fight that he got winded in. Like, he got tired, like, winded, like, breathing hard. He did win, you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't breathing as hard on none of his other fights. Mm -hmm. The Kirkland had about maybe two more rounds in there, then it was going to be, like, look, it's going to be something. He just couldn't do it. He needed at least... Now did, now, did uh, James give up boxing, or is he coming back, or is he still boxing on the lower circuit? It's just light. That's what it is. He just off and on with every – going to different people, you know, training with this person. And, right, he go train with this person. That ain't right. So it's – he doing his own thing, man. I wish him the best of luck, you know. Mm -hmm. But right now, as of I age, it's like kind of getting old, old with now. You got to let this young generation come on through and help them. Teach them the, like, teach them what we didn't know nothing about when we were young. Like, teach them the right way to go, you know. But we getting older. We ain't getting younger. We getting older. So that's why I'm trying to help Floyd and show him. And then when I go and I see Devin or Shakur, or they can still, they listen to me. They hit me out. And they know you got to stay in the gym and be in shape. That's the key part of the boxing, being in shape. They got the skills, but you ain't in shape, you're going to lose. So you got Canelo Alvarez, he doing some things with his little crew, his little, um, I call them essays. He got his old essays, and he teaching them the right way to, of doing things. Being in shape, like Victor Valdez, I think that's his name, he knocked his dude out, won the world championship. He got the heavyweight, he just won. You know what I'm saying? He got the other boy over there, Ryan. You know what I'm saying? They winning. Why they winning? Because they listening to... Canelo, you know what I'm saying? They stand in the gym, stand in shape. That's what you got to do if you want to make it to the top. We didn't know no better back then. We was on the streets trying to get a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get money. Cause we ain't had nothing. We we was poor. We ain't had nothing. You know what I'm saying? So we feel like we was the baddest dude on the planet than just going there and win anyway with our training. So, but it ain't like that. That's why I'm telling the young cats, they got the train if you want to get that title. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. Now, now, now um, Curtis, and I really appreciate you um this evening taking a moment out to be on the Gerard Show. We have a couple of questions. We'll take them in one moment. But Curtis, um, now you make and ha- and you you're making great money. You're doing very well. As you um as you mentioned, you are also a self-made millionaire. Um, there's a lot of people that make money, make money in boxing, make money in golf, make money in whatever. But what's the secret of keeping the money you make? That's what I learned from James Prince. Jay Prince taught me, he told me straight up, man, you got to get you some property, some land. You know what I'm saying? When you get you some money, may get you some property, some land. But before I did all that, I made sure I bought me a house. You know what I'm saying? I got a big house that's paid for one point something million. I'm in a one point, I'm in a one point million home right now. This is one of my duplex on the east side of Austin. Why don't you give us a little tour of it? I just, it just, you know, it's just a living room right here. I got, I want to show y'all the outside. It's kind of dark outside. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is one. We got this on the market right now for 1.4. You know, I got a contract already on it. We closed at the end of this month. Oh my yeah. goodness. And now how much did you initially pay for the home? We put, we, we paid, I paid like 500 and something, 500 and something thousand. And then I sold, but I'm selling for 1.4 million. So we built it from ground up though, but I got Oh a- my goodness, wow. That's a, it's an absolutely beautiful home. And this is in Austin, Texas? Yeah, this is in Austin, Texas. In my, my house, I got one way lot. In Georgetown, I got four or five other properties up here in uh, Dale Valley. I got one in Colleen. I got one, uh, I got many of them, it's unreal. But I buy them. Rinse them out though, mm-hmm. you know, make a check a month at least that come, you know. So, so Curtis, some of them you keep, some of them you uh rent. I keep all of them, I just rent them out. But some mm-hmm. of them, I, like I buy and pick them up and sell them. I get them on the four clothes, I buy them and I sell them. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred thousand like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to Curtis Minx. He's a boxer and an entrepreneur, a real businessman. Um, he's done it in a ring, and he's doing it now in a real estate industry, making millions. And I don't even think the guy's 30 years old. I could be wrong. He's a very young man doing big things with the Texas T accent. My youngsters come, they say, oh, gee, I'm 37 now, man. Oh, so I got suits older than you. Okay, I got it, uh, I- <laughs> Curtis, and and we hope to see him in the ring again. Um, they, they get the monitor. That man could fight, man. He has um, he reminds me, you know, of a cross between um Floyd Mayweather in his style, as also as Adrian Broner. Um, very fast hands. Well, you known for your power and your speed, or a balance of both? No, I li- I got a lot of skills and, and a bunch of speed. You know, I don't I take less punishment. I don't get hit that much. You know. I'm glad you mentioned that, Curtis. Let's let's talk about this real quick before we take the car. A couple questions for him. Now, Curtis, um, people don't understand boxing. People watch boxing many times as a fan, but a very uneducated fan. Um, for example, Floyd is the master at, at boxing because he went in it to uh, hit but not get hit. But we many times have grown up being so spoiled when watching Mike Tyson lay people out. And then seeing a not and seeing um, Muhammad Ali take brutal punishment, but that is not really the uh, premise of what boxing is all about. Is that correct, Curtis? Yeah, boxing is hit and not get hit. You know what I'm saying? You don't supposed to get hit. You're supposed to move, slip, catch, throw, punch. Like Champ is the best at it. Mayweather, he's the best of them all. Now I got to give him that. You know what I'm saying? He 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 cold. That man is the truth. But Shakur Stevenson kind of like that too. Y'all really can't tell, but that dude is cold too, Shakur. He just got to keep his mind in the in the gym and in that ring. And uh, he going to be something. Devin going to be something. That dude there, he can hit and don't get hit. He cold. He going to stick that jab and he going to slip. Then this Floyd, that little, little he, he, oh, he quick on his feet. You know what I'm saying? He's a little bit quicker than all of them on his feet. But he still got to get some of, more of that pro in him, which he, that's what he's learning. He ain't number 18. See, them guys 23, 22, and a little bit older than Floyd. Mm-hmm. Floyd taking it one day at a time, and, and his day is coming. But, boy, them boys are good, man. 
That that is absolutely correct. We'll take some questions for this uh, very wise uh, young man, uh, Curtis Meeks, on the Sherrod Show this evening. Uh, we have a question. This is from Matlin. This is from Matlin. She is from Chicago. She's saying, um, "You're an impressive boxer. Rather young to have retired." Her question is, "What is the hardest punch you've ever taken in the ring?" Oh, uh, the hardest punch I ever taken in the ring was, um, I say. Shit, dude, James Kirkland. Yeah, James Kirkland caught me with a good one. That's Did it knock the whole... wind out of you? Huh? Did it knock the wind out of you? No, I ain't get knocked the wind out. Of. I got hit like in the head, you know, get caught with a, with his head shot. And then I got hit with a body shot through the guy Devin fight, uh, Lenores. He caught me with a good shot through the body. Yeah, he hit pretty hard. He was, I probably, that probably was the hardest hit. I got hit by Lenores to the body, then Kirkland. I've been sparring Kirkland since we was eight, nine, ten years old. So I'm familiar. Our last sparring section was uh we went 12 rounds, me and Kirkland. That was the last time we ever sparred. And we were battling it. We were going, we were battling it out. But um, but yeah, I say James Kirkland though. Well, I appreciate your question, Madeline. Very good question. This question is from Mike. He's from Madison, Wisconsin. His question for you is. If boxers are so hard to hit by an average Joe, how do you all hit each other in the ring? You gotta be small. You gotta be real small. You gotta be educated in the ring. It's like going to school, man. You gotta be smart. How them people in honor classes and shit, they be in honor classes and all that. It's just like in the ring, you got to, you got to figure them out, knowing men. It's just a, like, you got to, you just gotta know with this boxing, you gotta know. Very good question, uh, very good question. This last question is from Byron. This is from Byron. He is from uh, Brooklyn, New York. He's saying, um, appreciate Sherrard having boxers on the show, more boxers. You all really teach us a lot of life lessons. His, he has a two-part question for you. His first question is, how is it that Floyd made people look slow in a ring when he was in there with fellow professionals, such as Pacquiao, Canelo, Robert Guerrero, and so many, how was it he was able to make them look slow when they're professionals as well? Because he trained harder than all of them. Tr Champ trained harder than all of them, and he's going to beat you up. Like, he do a whole bunch of work, and after the work that he do, he go run him four miles. Like, all that hard work, he do all the hard work, then he go run him four miles. They not doing that. Ain't no fight I seen doing that. Champ is the only fighter that I've seen that's doing that. So when he gets in the ring, it's like taking candy from a baby. He's just going to beat you up, outsmart you, and he's going to beat you up. You know what I'm saying? So that's how he makes it look so easy. Man, wow. This Wow. Uh, Curtis, we thank you so much for your questions. I know Curtis is so busy um, with all that he has going on. Curtis, where can people respond and be able to reply to you or answer any questions, um, more boxing questions or business questions? How can they be able to reach out to you? They can go on my Instagram at 21Curtis or the Facebook, Curtis Meeks. You know, they Cur can and, and, and go ahead. It's on the monitor. One more time. It's 21Curtis on Instagram. And Curtis Meeks on Facebook. Curtis, we want to thank you so much for being uh, on the Sherrard Show this evening. Uh, again, I hope to see you in the ring. Um, this man is a true professional on and off and out of the ring. And we thank you so much for being on the show. Curtis, in the meantime, enjoy your evening. And we look to have you on again. I appreciate it. Take care now, sir. And then all we have um, coming on to the show, a gentleman who's going to give some of the greatest relationship advice you can ever have. His name is Uncle Puche. Um, he is a relationship guru. He just joined us here on the Sherrod Show. And if you look at him now, he looks like he was just doing some pimping. How you doing, Uncle Puche? <laughs> pimping, pimping ain't easy, so I ain't doing too well. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, if you look at him on Instagram, he gives some very heartfelt advice about his experiences as well as about um, experiences for the Young Bucks. Uh, as mm -hmm. well. So tell us a little bit about uncle, how you were able to uh, uh, navigate through this dating scene and what's the difference between what the youngsters are going through opposed mm -hmm. to what you're going through. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much, Mr. Sharp. That's what I like to call you uh, for allowing me to be on the show. But um, for myself personally, I would say that I call myself a, a millennial uh, youth group counselor from toxic males. So I'm 28 years old. 
world's a little bit different now. You know, you got the internet. And so it's one of those things now, when you look at dating, you can't just be a one trick pony. You know what I'm saying? Man gotta be Superman, gotta be a handyman, gotta be the best man and emotional man at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things where I looked at my life, right? And I was brought up with like this stoic, tough guy thing. And then now I start looking at the ladies like they want an emotionally available man. I don't know, emotionally available, I don't know what that is. And so I started looking back at it and I started looking at a lot of you coming after me, making the same mistakes I was making. And I was like, this ain't okay. I don't like this. This ain't cool. So I decided to, uh, you know, start giving some dating advice. And hopefully, you know, I went through the troubles I went through, so they don't have to go through that. But they're going to do it anyways, young whippersnappers. Now, when you say mistakes you've made, um, mm -hmm. um, what are you saying? Now, what's some of the mistakes you've made with the ladies? Um, you were too <laughs> nice. You were too rough. Uh, what were some of the mistakes you made in dating? Well, I mean, I ain't gonna say nothing. Get me locked up, Mr. Sharp. I mean, you too. No, rough. no, what I mean, too rough. I know. I'm just playing. I mean, I'm just playing. I'm just too. Oh, okay, I'm just yeah, playing. yeah. We don't want that. <laughs> Not at all. You trying to get me in the the other categories? No, I'm just kidding. Um, it was a, it was a plethora of things. You know, I think honestly, you know, growing up, I mean, we talked about this. You know, shout outs to you. Uh, it's one of those things where if you're a gentleman, you're always gonna win. You know what I'm saying? And I was either you know trying to be like too too um too stoic where like, I don't care, whatever lady, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. And see her run off with the man who, you know, showed his emotions or I was too available and too caring. And you can be, you can be too nice. Yeah. Sometimes you got to give some space. You know what I'm saying? You got to back up and give lady some elbow room. And so I had to find out the middle ground of understanding. Like it first starts with self-love, honestly, Mr. Sharp, it starts with self-love. So when I'm telling all these stories to the youth, or the young whippersnappers, as I call them, I'm really just trying to get you to remember that it's all about remembering what's inside you first. You ain't finna, you're not gonna impress anybody's auntie trying to love on their auntie all the time. No, 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 no. You gotta learn how to love yourself first. And that's really what I came down to. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's interesting though, and you probably don't remember this since you're so mm -hmm. young, but mm -hmm. um, in now, it, when I was growing up and even before mm -hmm. then, um, it was more of a woman's world when it yeah. came down to uh, dating, because, yeah. you know, it was more men that weren't in jail, that mm -hmm. weren't, you know, uh, switching, switch hitting, and so many mm -hmm. other things along with that. Yeah. So a lot of times women could uh, just, you know, you had to really work hard to get this woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. we live in a society where it's, so, it's not that many good men. So a lot of women are, um, it's, it's like five women to one man and you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So now women are bringing that guard down because they yeah. know it's a good chance they can miss a good man yeah. if they play too hard to get because yeah. guys don't have to wait uh, on a woman like they used to. What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm glad you asked me that question because in, let me say this, I mean this in all due respect to anybody that I'm about to say this to that's older than me, right? You all lived in an age where you had no option, but you, in my eyes, had some best options. The reason why that is this, right? When you got to know somebody, you had to get to know them. For them and them is what they were. You saw them, the first time you saw them, they probably looked good, so that's what you perceived them to be. Then you got to learn about them. Us, I'm living in the swipe right generation. You know what I'm saying? I look fly 24 7, 365, because I perceive to be fly. I am not fly all the time. You get what I'm saying? And so where it comes down to now, where I think ladies, they feel like they have to break down their guard a little bit because it's like, girl, you cannot do that but I got like five other people in my DMs. But the flip side of that, I got five people in my DMs. She got 50, you know what I'm saying? And so now it's on men to be like, hey, you, you gotta come a little bit harder. You gotta come a little bit better. You gotta, you gotta have your stuff in order to date these ladies. Cause I used to think that women weren't competitive. <clears throat> no, they're I mean, more competitive than we are when it comes to dating. Don't know why don't wanna be with no non-alpha man. Don't know woman wanna be with a man who can beat up by Frank. Who wants to be with a man that get beat up? Oh, my, my husband gets beat up No. Never. So no, <laughs> what it came down to, Mr. Sharp, is that I just I came to the terms where it's like, you know, yeah, I got options. But believe me, if she's if she's beautiful, she got her stuff together. She got options, too. And it's just understanding that playing field. Now, when we get to that portion, now it's an understanding factor. It, like that whole you fly, I'm fly, we too fly. No, 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 no. That's going to leave us single and lonely. I tried that. Who going to outfly each other? We're going to just fly away. OK, let me ask you a question. Now, this yes, generation, sir. your generation is really a generation that likes this. Um, my generation, no, and generations mm. before. Yes, but sir. say, for example, you met a woman and she was rich already. Would that be a turn off or a turn on for you? Okay, so I'm glad you asked me that question. Um, now, the age I'm at now, turn on. Now, the age I was, turn off. 
if I could give you two sides of that coin, is that when you're a man who understands a woman that's having things, still needs assistance from a man in other places than just money, and I don't mean just in a physical sense, then you understand that the money factor is just, it's just, it's just that. That's just the money. You know what I'm saying? But when you are an insecure man, as which I was previously in my life, oh, no, no, I don't want to make more money than me. I don't want to make no money. You're an idiot. Who, who ever said they want to be with a broke person? I never get mad at a man or a woman who wants to be with somebody with money. Nobody ever said, I like living average. You like average food, Mr. Sharp? No, you don't. You're a very good looking man. Okay. No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, um, no, nah, I don't care about a one more money, but I will tell you this, if she has more money than me, that is something in my mindset that I have to take consideration into because she don't want to do certain things. And, you know, if it's on her dime, then, you know, we talking about different things there, but I have to, everybody has a role to play. And if you want to let money downplay your relationship with someone, then you need to grow up. That's just my opinion. Very good. Very good. And uh, the questions are coming in and we'll take them in mm-hmm. a moment from mm-hmm. Uncle Puche. He is dropping some wisdom tonight, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. I hope you brought your pen and paper. You know, women have a lot of questions about men, but answer this or clear this up for us, Uncle. Yeah. Um, I should be calling you nephew, though, really. You really so should, Mr. Sharp. Should be calling you nephew. <laughs> hey, but hey, listen, that was the play on words. I appreciate it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> That's a drop. I do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 women have questions because a lot of times women are, are trying to figure out and they make it seem like or feel that we're difficult. Mm. But can you let people know how simple men really are? What do we what does men really want, nephew? I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this now, just for me, paying attention to good men. This is good men. What do good men want? Because that's that's the first question, because when you say what do men want? That's, that's a loaded question. Some men are psychopaths, some men are homicidal, some men, men are crazy, you know what I'm saying? So I don't care what they want. I wanna know what good men want. Cause I wanna know what good, I don't, what women want. I, I, I don't wanna date women. I wanna date a woman, but anyways. Um, I honestly think to be so honest and so serious and so sincere, most men just want understanding. It's like, ma'am, listen, I've had a hard day. I went to work, things are effed up. I'm trying my best to stay cool. I really wanna slap somebody. And now I got to come home and now you want to remind me of something I didn't do. Girl, do you know how many things I did today? You know, and so it's just understanding. Like, I think good men really just want to say, because realistically, I'll do anything for anybody who can understand my circumstance, you know, like, like in the, in the confines of love, you know what I'm saying? But if you can understand where I'm coming from and I'm not BSing you, you're not BSing me, then girl, you ain't never, I don't want to, listen, it's lonely in these streets, Mr. Sharp. I don't want to be in everybody's bed, okay? I want to be with one woman. I want to be safe with one woman. And I think that's a big misconception because they think all men want to be players. No, no, we don't. We just want to be understood. And, you know, we will cater. Because I think most men want to actually take care. Listen, I call my mama every time I leave work to ask if she needs something just because I want to do something for a woman. Most men want to do things for your woman or a woman, but I got nobody to do it for them. Now, 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 this is interesting. I like that what you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the questions are blown up. We'll get to you in a minute. We'll get you in mm-hmm. And he's going to stand by what he says. So really trust shall. me on that. Nephew, mm-hmm. you know what he's talking about. Um, uh, now, my question, though, for you mm-hmm. uh, is that um, do you think or do you feel that, let me set this up right now. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, um, mm-hmm. you could romance women because it was easier to romance them. You put mm, some Teddy Pendergrass on, you put some Sam Cooke, some Al Green, mm, even mm-hmm. if you couldn't, if you didn't have the gift of gab, you could put mm-hmm. a record on just mm-hmm. to tell her how you felt and she understood mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Now it seems like in this generation, you do something mm-hmm. like that. Everybody, oh, what you putting that mess on for? You need to be the man and talk to you and be able to t- explain how you feel and blah, blah, blah. Is, am I reading this wrong or misreading it and, or is that the generation? Well, I will say this. It's called sample size, mm-hmm. you know? And yes, there are people who feel that way, right? But I will tell you, like, the original Uncle Puche originally told me, you don't want to date the women. <laughs> like, I, I just, that is, for you to tell me, right, how I'm communicating, if I'm communicating verbally or, you know, through music or however I'm communicating, if I'm, as long as I'm not hitting you or yelling at you, how can you tell me how I'm communicating with you as poorly? Like, as a man, understand this, this is what I think a lot of women don't understand, is that men aren't generally asked their opinion. I ain't asked my opinion. Don't nobody care about my opinion. They told me to do it. I did it. You asked me to go to the store to get you something. I did it. You didn't say get yourself something too. I mean, it's unseen what it maybe I should get myself something too. But let me tell you something. If I go to the store and I don't ask or I don't insinuate that you want something, then eh, we got problems. 
So when it comes down to don't put that music on, I, I just look at you and be like, well, let me tell you something. You probably not even old enough to tell me Mike Jones' cell phone number. So you ain't old enough to be talking to me. I don't even know what we're talking about. Who don't like Teddy Pendergrass? Who don't like Marvin Gaye? What is you talking about? Every person who's got some sense, no matter what color they are, then heard that music. It brought them to a happy place. And they said, turn that up. Now, if you said no, you need counseling. You, I got Ayama's number on speed dial. She can fix your life. Okay. <laughs> so that's just how I see it, sir. <laughs> Very good, very good. Now um, we'll take one more question to uh, I'll answer one more ask him one mm -hmm. more question. Then mm -hmm. we'll leave it to you to mm -hmm. put nephew uh, for those he's older than Uncle Puche <laughs> on the witness stand tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, what about mm -hmm. um, when you were younger, or you may still be like this? I don't know. Um, but when you're taking a woman out on a date, okay, uh -huh. you met her at a mm -hmm. fashion show. She wasn't a model. She like she mm. should have been a model. Yeah. You take her out to eat and all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, have you grown past the point of just wanting to jump her bones after the second or third date, or are you looking to get to know the person she really is? I'm celibate. I, I'm I'm only sleeping with the women I previously slept with. That's it. That there, there ain't no if that's celibate, then that's celibate. Now, but to, to be honest with you, sir, I don't. I'm pushing 30. I'll say that I'm pushing 30. And there was a time in my life, obviously, where it was like, oh, you look good. I just want to jump in the bed with you. Right. And I did that. I did it. I did it a good amount of times. I'll just say it like that. Uncle Puche is in the garden tool, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but what happens is, is I realized that flickering, fluttering flame flames out real quickly. You know what I'm saying? When you jump in bones, everything's passionate. Oh, I like you so much. I like you. You like me. Yeah, you do. And then, you know, what ends up happening. You have to start to like learn about this person and you realize I don't like you. I don't like anything about you. Yeah, that booty soft, but that attitude is hard, you know? And so now at this age, I like, I strive so hard to tell women like, please don't start talking nasty to me. Can we get to know each other? Like what books are you reading? Like, and I know people listening to this will probably be like, you lying. And I'm like, I I'm dead serious. Yeah, I'll give my cell phone number right now. We won't talk about sex until like I feel comfortable with it. It's like, I, I understand that physical interaction is important. I understand that. That wouldn't have been placed on this earth for no reason. But I do understand that once I open Pandora's box, ma'am, we gonna have a hard time going back to just being friends. And that's on your part and my part. I, I'm not here to dispel this myth that women can't sleep with men and men can't sleep with women without any emotional attachment. Do what you do. But Uncle Puchang, I can't. I got to get to know you. I got to like you. That's just me. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, and again, we're dropping some wisdom on us tonight, uh, Uncle Puche, uh, nephew Puche to me. But now we're gonna take your questions, ladies and gentlemen. I see you're lining up to hit them with some. Um, this is from Marissa. This is from Marissa. Marissa. She is from Dallas, Texas. Ooh, Her question is: You said you're dropping a lot of wisdom and knowledge. Um, what mm. does your girlfriend feel about this? That's her come first on. question. Come on, and then, come on. And then her second question is: Can men and women be just friends? Um, in a relationship? What do you think? First question. So first question, I'm single. Uh, I get that question a lot, but I'm single. Um, I like to tell people, you know, they're like, you're single. So how are you gonna talk about relationships? Because coaches always make the best champions. What are you talking about? Like, I I'm a loser. So I can tell you how to win. Um, but so I'm single. I've been single for about a year in three or four months. And it's really been more so my choice. Um, because it's just one of those things where I'm good where I'm at, because I know who I am. When I am ready for a relationship, you know, there are women that I'm interested in, but time, dedication, and that big M called money don't got enough of it. So, uh, yeah, that's just me. Uh, so, but my last girlfriend probably, I don't know what she would have thought of it because we don't speak. I don't speak to exes. Uh, <laughs> um, can men and women be friends? Yeah. Uh, if you're not physically attracted to her, that's just my, listen, my last girlfriend I met at work, Mr. Sharp. Do you think when I saw her, I thought I'm going to be her friend? She's going to be my. No, I, I, I saw she was a lovely girl. I said, hey, she seems nice. And if I get the opportunity, I will, you know, take it that far. So men and women can be friends. They can in a, in a series of non-physical interactions. You can't be in situations where the waters get murky and muddy. And not saying that you can't be two attractive people. I'm just saying y'all better not be crossing that line up in here. That's, again, personally, my personal experience. I failed at it. Maybe some of y'all can live, thrive in it, but I don't like temptation, Mr. Sharp. Let me tell you something. You show me the freedom, forbidden fruit, I'm gonna pluck it every time. Within within reason, within reason, within reason, within reason, <laughs> within reason. Very good, very good question. A very good answer as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question, Marissa. Um, <laughs> this question is from this question is for you. 
And this is from Jackie. Her name is Jackie P. And she is from Chicago. And she's saying, you're dropping a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge. These women need to hear this as well as these men. Her question is, what age do you feel is a good age for a man to get married? When he has finally understood that chasing women is a winless game. So there's no age. There is no age. Because you could be 45 still wondering what it's like to be with the next one. I, you know, I know a lot of people, I want to be actually married. You know, I want to be married. But the thing is, I also know I want other things that don't sit well with marriage. Like, I don't want to be home every night. I want to be on the road. I want to be going. Unless my wife wants to be there with me, it's really not a good idea right now. You know what I'm saying? So a man has, to, there's no age limit because society will tell you that I'm a failure. I'm 28 years old and I don't have a wife or kids. But in my eyes, I'm chilling. Because I know people that are 29 with three or four or five kids and they hate their lives. So whenever that man understands that it's not about chasing women, it's about actually finding someone who can keep you secure. That's when you should do that. Very good question. Very good answer. Um, I appreciate that. We'll take mm -hmm. two more questions from you. Mm -hmm. This is from Michael. This is from Michael. He is from Spanish Town, Jamaica. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Spanish Town, Jamaica. Oh, and his that? question is, why is it women in America seem to not want to be a help me like the Bible says? They, they want it to make it about their hair and nails and what you can do for them, opposed to the Bible saying God will make them make uh, Adam a suitable help me. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's what I'm saying. How did he know I had a, a history in, in religion? That's funny. Um, well, this probably be my most long-winded answer. But th the thing is, I think American women, one, that's a sample size. Let me back that up like believing that women don't want to help is, is a sample size um but i i think for the women he's talking about is that uh they're they're caught up in vanity you see i don't know if it's an age thing or if it's a person thing but humans tend to believe that they are you know god's gift to earth so any human walking around who don't want to help who wants to just worry about their the hair and their nails and things like that well they haven't been hit with the reality of life is that father time's gonna catch up with all of us you see what I'm saying? And if you're doing all this for vanity, then that's your thing. But understand that that's going to fade. That's going to fade. Your beauty's going to fade. Beyonce ain't going to look like Beyonce forever. I love me some Angela Bassett. But you know what? You know, one day she's just going to look like an old lady. And that's not a bad thing. That's just understanding if that's what you're banking off of, understand that's going to fade. And really, that ticket runs out real quickly. So if you're dealing with people like that, again, I would say that's a small sample size. But if those people want to be like that, understand they just need to find people that be like that. Because there's men out there that feel the same way. Those men should date those type of women. The men who don't care about the vanity portion of a woman who wants to be upkept and that's all she care about, don't date them type of women. Why are you mad at her? That's who she want to be. You know who I am? I'm five foot nine. That's like you getting mad at me that I'm not six feet tall. I ain't never going to get taller. You see what I'm saying? So why fixate on that? Fixate on a woman who has the morals and has the standards that you want for. Because with me, I used to go out with the women who didn't have the heart of God. I love God. I ain't got no problem saying that. I love God. Amen. If you don't love God, what's wrong with you? Damn. You know what I'm saying? And so I used to date women who didn't. And I used to wonder, like, what's wrong with you? Why won't you act like this? And it's like, because she don't like God, bro. That's not her thing, you know? And so that being said, I had to stop chastising them women. I had to start chastising myself. I was going after the wrong type of woman. So I would say, instead of criticizing those people, how about you get you some business and get around people that you actually enjoy? <laughs> very good question. Very good. Very good. This kid is really on it. He's not my nephew. He is on <laughs> it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take one last question and then we'll let this gentleman go. Um, this question is from Anderson, Anderson Miller. Um, he is actually from Wyoming watching the Sherrod show. Oh, and his question is for you. His question um, is saying nephew or mm -hmm. Uncle Puche. <laughs> his question, though, is you're speaking about how you don't like temptation. But mm. what if when your kind of woman comes down the street, um, how can you not want to think about sleeping with her when you date her? Oh, we got you, uncle. Yeah, it got me. Like, so do I just look at the women I like and I'm like, yeah, yucky. Um, listen, here's the thing. I like to tell people all the time. I talk a lot of crap, but I'm still a human. You know what I'm saying? They're there. I can't. <laughs> I can't fault anybody for going after what they want. So therefore, I will say if, if it's if, if it was a woman that I'm interested in, thoroughly interested in, yeah, I, I will you know, shoot my shot. You know, as far as, you know, it's weird. Me and just physical interaction with women, it just has to take a long time for me to get there. I, I know that's not something a lot of people are used to, 
but as a man, I'm, I'm just not, I'm, it's just not me. I just, I can't have emotionless interactions with people. So I know I can't just jump in the bed with people anymore. Again, I'm pushing 30 when I was younger, you know, when I was a teen, you know, but if I was to say, how do I deal with temptation? Simple. Uh, I, I pray, man. I, I, I ask for strength. You know what I'm saying? I ask now at this point in my life, I ask that I don't waste nobody's auntie time and nobody's auntie waste my time. So if I see a woman that I like, I've done this before, Mr. Sharp. You know what I'm saying? If I feel like I'm not being a good man, I will simply say, you need to just stop talking to me. It's just not going to work. And I, I know that isn't the norm, but I believe we need to get rid of this narrative of ghosting people. Stop ghosting people. You, you don't know how to talk about your feelings. What's wrong with you? I don't want to be dealing with you no more. And so if I want to deal with you, I will tell you that. But if I say I'm about to waste your time, I will text you. I'm about to waste your time. Now, if you want to get on this roller coaster ride, no, that's up to you. You grown. <laughs> very good. Very good. We really appreciate all you all's questions um, mm. to nephew or um, as, as he's called, Uncle Puche. He actually has a, a, a Instagram. You got to check this right on the monitor, ladies and gentlemen. And here are some of his takes. Uh, his latest one. Now, look at your monitors, him in a bathtub eating oranges, talking about his him being being um his 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 relative saying you really doing your thing. And he's talking about I ain't doing that. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. I love you know, it. I love well, it. Well, with a family member, we was talking, and he was like, You doing it, man? You doing it, doing the thing. I'm like, Yeah, I guess I'm doing it. But honest to God, I ain't doing nothing. But working. Just all hard work, baby. I'm an Uncle Pete, man. I tell you that. This uh, beautiful life that we all live is just something that's fugage. No, 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 no. It's real, baby. We just work for it. You know what I'm saying? This is hard dedication. A lot of broken hours. A lot of sleepless hours. A lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Really, I, I've been watching you, Uncle Puche. <laughs> thank about you. Thank you. Doing this big thing. But um, one of the funniest videos, and we'll run it in a moment, is mm -hmm. uh, him mm -hmm. giving his advice months ago about mm -hmm. ways to push the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then you said, here's how you push the relationship. You don't. You don't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh may, may I may I add may I add to that? May I may I give my just a quick synopsis on that, Mr. Sharp? Sure. That's very important. So what 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 uh, <clears throat> what, uh what, oh, Uncle Uncle Sharp was talking about, Uncle Sharad was talking about, is uh how it actually got started was uh first and foremost, I want to thank you for even giving me the opportunity. It, you know, I would have never thought I'd even be this far without your help in the first place all those months ago. So thank you. Let me get on and say that. Right. Um, but the the video. <laughs> Unk is talking about here is uh I uh I do a podcast six B under podcast the number six letters F T under podcast by Sarkarians Media uh, Group that's us and the podcast is always getting questions from ladies talking about why do men not apply enough pressure why don't you apply enough pressure why don't you apply enough pressure and you know that's a catch twenty two that's a catch twenty two apply enough pressure you see this a lot especially on social media, apply pressure, apply pressure. Well, as your Uncle P, I'm here to tell you something. Applying pressure is cool, but applying pressure is a thin line between getting your ass arrested for stalking, okay? This is how you apply the most amount of pressure that's appropriate. You do this, and give you some game. Nothing, you don't, you don't, no, nope, no. There's no such thing as applying the pressure, bro. Listen, you tell somebody this is what you do. Listen, you, you, family member, listen to me. You tell them how you feel, when you feel, and if they feeling you, it's the game. If they not, leave them alone. Don't be listening to these people applying pressure. You'll catch your ass doing five to 10. What? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Applying pressure is a catch 22. Let me tell you something. Applying pressure from a man that you find attractive is applying pressure. Applying pressure from a man you don't find attractive is stalking. Okay, that is that that is that's lurking. So so I said I finally have to say like, listen, this is how you apply enough pressure. You don't. I say to you, hey woman that I find physically attractive, I want to get to know you. Do you want to get to know me? Yes. Great. Let's keep going. No. Have a nice day. Not no. Not keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming. girl. If you don't shut up, be quiet. Talking. <laughs> Exactly. So. <laughs> Very good. But you're going to check him out. And he Thank is you. going to be visiting us at least once a month, giving mm -hmm. relationship advice on the Sherrod Show. Is that okay, nephew? That's a, hey, sir. I, man, listen, for how you got me in the game, I appreciate you. Anything. You know, we love having him. We love having him. Direct mm -hmm. your questions to him, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, he has the wisdom. He knows what he's doing. He might get a new girlfriend out of this. We don't uh, know, but 
This man is, uh, he's hes brilliant. I'm so proud of him um, where he's come. And he's a fascinating editor. I just want to let you know, he can edit so well. If you need him, um, help getting something edited, just also reach out as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. But on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we have Mr. Robert De Niro stopping by on the show. And then we also have a couple other big time celebrities. So you don't want to miss it on Essence Television. In the meantime, tune in, stay blessed. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, Sherrard. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence television networks at gmail.com if you would like to get information to the host sherrard you can email him at the show.com once again thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week